okay into meditation posture. Settle the body for a moment. And back to your altruistic motivation, reviving it, refuge in bodhicitta. And briefly back to the breath. And now shift to analysis. And so we're looking at the stimulus to take the essence from your optimum human rebirth or your perfect human rebirth. We've already looked at how we have eight freedoms and ten endowments. We're in so incredibly fortunate. Now we're going to look at how to extract the essence from this perfect human rebirth or optimum human rebirth training our mind in the stages of the path shared with the small scope, developing a yearning for a good rebirth, or from a secular perspective, you could say, for a good legacy, or for something positive after you die. First, we think about our present rebirth will not last long, and that we will die. So the drawbacks of not remembering death we've discussed, but in summary, we won't remember the Dharma and to practice it. We'll have a death with regrets. And the advantages of remembering death we've discussed, but the main thing is that our life will be beneficial and powerful all throughout. And when we die, it will be happily and gladly. So the actual way to remember death, the nine part meditation on death. So we first think about the fact that death is certain. It's inevitable. Your own specific death is certain, is inevitable. This body that your mind is sitting in right now will no longer support consciousness at some point. So the Lord of Death, karma, disturbing emotions, impermanence, will inevitably come. And no circumstance at all can prevent this. So don't let your mind jump over the obviousness of this. The fact that you already know this logically. Try and let it touch you. Nothing is being added to your lifespan, and it is always being subtracted from. And thinking about how you will definitely die before getting round to practicing Dharma, if you don't take control of your mind now. So thinking about so far, many years were spent growing up, understanding the world, deciding on a profession, deciding on a partner or not, deciding on having children or not, making all the big decisions,
And then as you became more stable, perhaps, maybe more space opened up to examine the spiritual path. Or maybe in those developmental years, there was more space. But it still wasn't a lot of space. Most of the years were spent busy, externally and internally busy. Some activities that were essential in order to survive. Some activities that were necessary in order to cultivate positive, healthy relationships. And many activities that were unnecessary. And then here you are now, having met a spiritual path, having met meaningful work. Now, how much time is spent genuinely connecting with deep introspection, deep bodhicitta mindfulness, actual practice, as opposed to how much of your daily life is lost in logistics and distractions. So be kind to yourself while you do this examination, while still being very honest. Because of not remembering death, how much time right now is wasted. and shift to the second root, thinking about the uncertainty of when you will die. The lifespan of people from the southern continent, meaning Jambuvipa, meaning Earth, is not fixed. And this is especially so for lifespans during this degenerate times, meaning times when the Buddha is no longer showing the full Sambhogakaya aspect or the supreme Nirmanakaya form. And so what does this mean for you particularly? It means that there is no guarantee that if you eat well and sleep well and minimize stress and exercise properly, that you'll somehow escape aging and death. Those things are conditions for health and long life. They're not the substantial cause. When you die is uncertain because there are many factors contributing to your death and few towards your life. Meaning that even the food that is supposed to sustain us could actually be the cause of our death. The medicines that should help us might not digest properly. The cars that carry us, the houses that shelter us, can all wind up being conditions of our death. When we die is uncertain because the body is extremely fragile. A few minutes without breath, a few days without water, a few weeks without food, is all it takes. An illness or a virus, a fault in one of our organs. So try to deeply touch that healthy people die before sick people every single day. Young people die before old people every single day. Why not me?
and the third root, thinking of how nothing can help you when you die except the Dharma, meaning your inner work towards positive states of mind that you've actually integrated. That's the only thing that will protect you from suffering. Your wealth cannot help you. The best doctors, the best resources, can maybe only assist in bringing some comfort. But you can't buy off death. Friends and relatives cannot help you at the time of death directly. They might be able to remind you of your spiritual path. They might be able to create supportive atmosphere. Or they might distract you or be consumed with their own grief or their own stories. And even your body cannot help you. You can't will it into health. You can't force it into life once the karma of this life has exhausted. And so you think, death is certain, therefore I must practice. The time of death is uncertain, therefore I must practice now. At the time of death, nothing can help you except dharma, your own integrated dharma. Therefore, we must practice purely, free from the eight worldly concerns. On your deathbed, your regrets will not include having delved more deeply into the spiritual path. Your regrets will include all the ways you distracted yourself from it, the lost opportunities to repair relationships, the lost opportunities for inner work. And so tying this death reflection to our reflection on perfect human rebirth, if we were to waste this life, it would be as if returning empty-handed from a land of jewels. The abundance of this life the support of this life in terms of access to teachings, in terms of health enough for independence, in terms of supportive community. We are so rich. Please may we use our riches, the real riches, and not waste time. And now dedicate. John Chu Sam Cho Rimpo She Ma Ke Panam Ke Gyuchi Ke Pan Yam Pa Me Pa Yam Gon He Gon Du Pao Sho Toni Da Wa Rimpo She Ma Ke Panam Ke Gyuchi Ke Pan Yam Pa Me Pa Yi Gon He Gon Du Pao Sho May bodhicitta and the wisdom realizing the emptiness of inherent existence arise where it has not yet arisen. Where it has arisen, may it deepen and integrate within us. May we carry it off our cushion into the rest of the day, life, and lifetimes. and you can relax your attention. Okay, see you next time.